Sentenced in June. I'm starting to worry that when Hillary Clinton travels, there's going to need to be two planes, one for her and her entourage and one for her baggage. <laughs> 2016 hopeful Rand Paul taking on Hillary Clinton. That comment over the weekend in New Hampshire and Kentucky Senator Rand Paul and others. Uh, they clearly have her in their crosshair. Senator Paul, Republican presidential candidate, is with me now. How are you, Senator? Good morning. Very good. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, what do you mean baggage? How would you um, define that in 18 seconds or less? Well, baggage is something that's harmful to you that has to do with your history, basically. And I think her lack of defense of her Benghazi is baggage. I think her email server that was not a government server is baggage. And I also think these contributions from to the Clinton Foundation are baggage. So, yeah, I think it's, she'll need a whole plane you know, for it. On that, on that um, Clinton Foundation, you, you were quoted, I believe it was in the New York Times, right, uh, two days ago, as saying that the revelations in the book will, quote, shock people. How so? Well, you know, this is Peter Schweitzer's book, uh, Clinton's Cash, and it's coming out in about a week or two, so I don't have all the details, but I have been briefed on it, and I do know that he's gone through and meticulously detailed where the contributions have come to for the foundation, and I think it's unseemly. Basically, we have, the Constitution specifically says you can't take gifts from foreign governments, and is it somehow skirting or going around the law to accept them through your foundation. I think it is, and it has a real sense of impropriety, and I think it ought to stop. Uh, one thing that needs to be nailed down here, I, I don't know if you know the answer, if you can offer it now. Did the speaking arrangement and the fee come before the alleged policy change, or was it the other way around? I don't know the details. I read in the New York Times article yesterday that apparently Bill Clinton's speaking fees went up astronomically after she became Secretary of State. So he was speaking for about $200,000 an hour, and then he began speaking for $500,000 an hour after, um, you know, that she was approved to be Secretary of State. I guess what, what I'm trying and to he, figure out, was he paid before the policy change, or did the policy change come before the speaking engagement was even booked? I think you'll have to get the book to find that out and have Peter on because I think there there are going to be enormous amounts of details. It's a very detailed book with all the uh, facts lined up, and I'm just not at liberty, nor do I have a complete grasp of all the facts to recite right. them. Well, John Podesta runs our campaign. I know you know that, and he was on Charlie Rose yesterday. And he says there's nothing new here. And the Clinton Foundation, in fact, they're the ones who provided all the information in order for Schweitzer to write the book. To that, you say what? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see. I think there's information from all around the world that will be in the book. I also think that there's something big here. And the big thing is, is the, the idea of taking money from foreign countries. We have campaign finance laws that say you can't take money from foreign citizens or from foreign governments. She's taking money from countries that abuse the rights of women. She's going to have to explain how that's consistent with supposedly being a proponent of women's rights when she's taking money from countries that publicly whip women who have been raped. So something's not right here, and I think it, 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 people are going to ask a lot of questions. Mm. The book is out on May 5th. Let's talk about your campaign, because people want to know if, if you get the nomination, how you would govern. Uh, Lindsey Graham said this about your worldview. Generally speaking, you have done more wrong than right. Uh, John McCain says you don't understand. You display this kind of naivete since, since you came to the Senate. What's going on there? This comes from a group of people who've been wrong about every foreign policy issue over the last two decades. I'll give you a couple of examples where they support the president's foreign policy and I don't. They supported Hillary Clinton's war in Libya. They supported President Obama's bombing of Assad. They also support President Obama's foreign aid to countries that hate us. So if there's anyone who is the most opposed to President Obama's foreign policy, it's me. And these people who call loudest to criticize me are great proponents of President Obama's foreign policy. They just want to do it 10 times over. But I'm the only one actually standing up and saying the war in Libya was a mistake. The bombing of Assad would make ISIS stronger. The arms to the Islamic rebels would make ISIS stronger. So I'm really the one standing up to President Obama. And these people are essentially the lapdogs for President Obama. And I think they're sensitive about that. Well, well, how are you define yourself? Uh, I mean, you're an inventionist or an isolationist? Uh, you're, you, you will be asked that question repeatedly, and you will yeah, say what? I would, 
I'm a Reagan Republican. I believe in a strong national defense. I believe in peace through strength. I think that intervention's not always the answer, and that some interventions lead to unintended consequences. So, for example, Hillary's war in Libya has made Libya less stable, more chaotic, and has allowed the rise of radical Islam. So we are more at risk after that war. It was a mistake for that war to occur and for the U.S. to be involved with toppling Gaddafi. Realize that these people who criticize me were for giving arms to Gaddafi last year or the year before, before they were for toppling Gaddafi. So they're on the both sides of so many wars. Some of these critics are for bombing both sides of the Syrian war. Their foreign policy is so disjointed, confusing, and chaotic that really people need to re-examine those who want to be involved in every war. I say we get involved when there is an American interest. I think we do have to militarily stop ISIS, but I am sad that ISIS got a lot of the weapons from interventionists in my party and the president who well, gave them the weapons indirectly. The word I got from New Hampshire over the weekend is that you guys are playing nice. Um, Perhaps I'll play not. Nice. I'll, I'll play nice if they'll play nice, but uh, if they're going to trot, you know, trot around the country criticizing me, I'm going to make sure that the American public knows that these are precisely the people that support President Obama's foreign aid, Libyan war, and the Syrian war, and they need to explain themselves. I know you had a big weekend in New Hampshire, and you're back in Iowa later this week. Senator, we will speak again. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. You bet. Rand Paul, the Republican from Kentucky. Martha. A World War II warship discovered.